Joel C. Rosenberg is back with us for the second week of special programming based on his book, Epicenter, Why the Current Rumblings in the Middle East Will Change Your Future. In this interview series, he's helping us to make sense of the constant headlines we see coming out of the Middle East, especially as they relate to Israel. Most of us view the headlines through a political or economic lens, but Joel challenges us to consider a third lens, the lens of Bible prophecy. And through that lens, he also suggests some possible headlines we're likely to read in the not-too-distant future. Joel is often called on for his perspective by many news media outlets such as ABC Nightline, CNN Headline News, Fox News, MSNBC, and, and many others, and radio as well. And he's with us for this special series as we consider how we can redeem the time God has given us before the soon return of Jesus Christ. Joel, welcome once again. Thank you. It's good to be back. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, Joel, this would have come up a lot earlier if my wife Anne was sitting here with me in this interview series, but we never asked you about your family. Oh. <laughs> uh, so you live in Washington. I do, yeah. And uh, your yeah. wife and how many kids? I have four boys, oh, yeah. Right. Lynn and I met at Syracuse University, fell in love in college. We were involved in Campus Crusade for Christ. We got married right out of school, uh, the summer of 1990. And uh, we've lived in Washington 17 years now and have four boys, Caleb, Jacob, Jonah, and then Noah. Right. And there was a six-year gap between uh, Jonah and Noah. But we joke that Jesus said in Matthew 24 that he said hey, he's not coming back again until the days of Noah. So we thought, you know, <laughs> if we're holding him back, we better have yeah. Noah. So now <laughs> there we do. There he is. Okay, <laughs> we're living so, in the days of Noah. So now we know the, the rest of that story. And <laughs> Anna, right. you're happy now. <laughs> I've, I've, I've filled in the gaps. Uh, but Joel, uh, the book Epicenter, for those maybe who, who didn't catch uh, some of the interviews last week, and if you didn't, let me uh, encourage you to go online, because we always keep a, uh, all our programming online. You can look back over the last uh, few uh, number of interviews and get caught up, because we can't always cover what we've covered already as we move forward. But the, the book Epicenter, for those who are, are not that familiar with it, um, we want to get it into your hands and we'll let you know how. But um, how would you... Uh, set someone up to say this is what you can expect uh, when you get this book? Well, the executive summary of, of Epicenter is really that uh, the first few chapters describe uh, my own journey from working for a series of U.S. and Israeli political leaders, including the former Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, and the former Deputy Prime Minister of Israel, uh, Natan Sharansky, and how I went from that life and from working with those men and their advisors and then pivoted in January of 2001 to writing a series of political thrillers, uh, The Last Jihad, The Last Days, The Ezekiel Option, and The Copper Scroll, all of which is, uh, all of them are based on a, a series of Bible prophecies. They're also based on my sense of what are some uh, geopolitical scenarios that might need to happen that might lead us up to some of the fulfillment of those prophecies. And of course the eerie thing is that some of those things that I thought were going to be fiction actually did end up happening, and that's what drew attention to, the, uh, to my books. So I described that, that story and some of the fictional elements that came true and the media attention that came out of that. And then after a few chapters on that, we, I look forward at the next um, uh, so 10 prophecies and thus 10 future headlines that we're going to read one day. And I describe the scriptures uh, and various people's understanding of those and some of the history of those is all carefully endnoted. And then we look at what's going on in the world today. Uh, I interviewed various world leaders, uh, a lot of Middle Eastern leaders. Lived in th uh, Lynn and the boys and I lived in uh, the Middle East for three months uh, writing the book. Mm. We got access to previously classified documents from the CIA, the White House, the State Department. So we look at what's going to happen scripturally, and then we say what is happening currently and say, you know, maybe we're getting close to the fulfillment of those prophecies. We don't know for sure. The book isn't designed to persuade people that those prophecies are imminent, just to let people know what the scriptures say and, and, and where we are in, in, in the geopolitical world that we live in today. I'm not trying to give timelines and saying this is when it's going to no, happen. No, I think that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there's some fascinating things that are happening. What we talked about last week. Ezekiel 38 and 39, the famous prophecies of the War of Gog and Magog, where Russia is going to form a military alliance with Iran and a group of other Middle Eastern countries to attack Israel in the last days. That is a prophecy that has always intrigued me. I document it in quite a lot of detail in the book. But frankly, as we talked about, uh, you know, Russia and Iran haven't had 
a military alliance like that in the 2,500 years since Ezekiel wrote it. But they're developing one today. And because they are, a lot of people are wondering, you know, are we getting closer to the fulfillment of that prophecy? Uh, you know, people who, who watch the news um, with an eye to the lens of Bible prophecy, uh, I think some antennas would be going up and ears getting, getting very big uh, recently because um, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the president of Iran, uh, was just here. In fact, uh, we'll let people in on, uh, on our taping schedule here, but this is, uh, is the end of, of September where we're taping this. You're actually watching this in October, I know on 100 Huntley Street, but we caught up with Joel when we could. Um, but you happen to be here on the day that president, the president of Iran was in New York uh, giving a speech um, to the uh, university uh, in New York. And, and he, um, he made some interesting comments right at the very beginning, mm -hmm. in fact, a prayer at the beginning of his speech. And so I, I'm gonna just roll a little bit uh, from that speech and, uh, and we'll be right back. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. The president is reciting verses from the Holy Quran in Arabic. O oh God, hasten the arrival of Imam al Mahdi and grant him good health and victory and make us his followers and those who attest to his rightfulness. All right, let, let me just read that prayer. O oh God, hasten the arrival of Imam Mahdi. Grant him good health and victory. It make us followers of those who attest to his rightfulness. Now, uh, as I said, you were happen to be here we're taping this series of interviews uh, right now. And so you, you get calls all the time from media saying, Joel, we need you uh, on this program or this program. Can you comment on this? And of course, uh, this happened to be a great time to get a hold of you for comment because uh, the president of Iran was in uh, New York City. Um, so we, you had a call from CNN headline news uh, station and the Glenn Beck show was saying, oh, we've got to get your comment, we've got to get drolls on this because as, as many do, mm -hmm. they, they want to get your thoughts and your take on a lot of this because of, uh, of the books you've written and, and the past media you've had in exposure. So we thought, well, there must be a way that we can accommodate the show. And so we fired up our cameras here in the studio, did a, a uplink by satellite uh, to the Glenn Beck show on CNN uh, headline news station and we were able to uh, to have uh, your comments here from our studio uh, put on that show and and some of you may have have caught it or not